Woo, hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. You sound good this morning. I'm reading today from the book of Luke chapter 11. I had something very unusual happen uh, as we were flying back from Israel yesterday. And um, we went and dedicated, and I'll show it to you a little bit later, the beautiful school and the beautiful four community centers that are reinforced bomb shelters. And then we dedicated the firehouse and the uh, fire trucks and all the equipment. It was just beautiful what God was doing there. And on the flight from New York City, you, you fly in from Tel Aviv to New York City, and then you have to catch a flight from New York City to Atlanta. And I uh, was sitting by a lady, and I got up to go to the restroom for a minute and was coming back, and she was coming up the aisle, and she was saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I said, what's wrong, what's wrong? And she was so upset. And, I, and she said, I was getting out of my seat to come, and I knocked my coffee over, and you had left some notes in the seat. So I just want you to know that not only am I caffeinated, my notes are caffeinated this morning. So y'all are in trouble. I just wish it had been Red Bull. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you love him today? Luke chapter 11. Go ahead. Somebody got happy right there. It's all right. to. God is good. Luke chapter 11, I'm going to read today a little more than I normally read, but I want you to follow me because it's so important and I won't preach long. Now, if it came to pass, it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say everybody out loud, let's go. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who've sinned against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, then he shifts gears. This is how you're to pray. Now watch this. He gives this illustration. And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut. My children are in the bed. It took me two hours to get them asleep. And they're in the bed with me. I cannot rise and give it to you. Bread, three loaves at midnight. I say to you, though he will not rise and give it to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, his importunity, he will rise and give him as much as he needs. Verse 9. So I say to you, everybody read, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone, come on, who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks, it shall be opened. Let me finish. I'll finish the rest. If a son asks for bread from his father, would a good father give him a stone? If he asked for fish, would he give him a serpent instead of a fish? If he asked for an egg, would he offer him a scorpion? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those? Here's one stipulation. It's all predicated upon this. He'll give it all. The Holy Spirit will give it all to those who what? Ask him. This story centered around midnight. 
The parable that Jesus taught about prayer is actually teaching us what the, pro, the, the posture, the position of the church should be right at midnight. Midnight is a type of the coming of the Lord. Midnight means Jesus is on the verge of coming. And what is the posture of the church? Jesus in his school of prayer in this text, after he teaches the Lord's prayer, draws a beautiful mental picture of a, a desperate knocking on the door at the midnight hour. The posture of the church is pounding on the door saying, I recognize I don't have bread. Bread is Jesus, the bread of his presence. This is my bread. Take it. I don't have enough of you. I need more of you in the midnight hour, not just for me. But I have friends coming. They're on a journey. And if I'm not full of you, I can't win them. I, if I'm not sold out to you, they won't want what I've got. I need the position of the church in the midnight hour is to pound on the door. The University of Chicago has a clock that they have been keeping since the 1960s, when the nuclear weapons were developed, the scientists who developed the nuclear weapons uh, started this clock. It's called a doomsday clock. And recently, in the year of 2022, they moved the, 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 hour, uh, the hour hand has been on midnight, on 12, for a long time. And the minute hand has been moving as they uh, assess the condition of the world and the dangers of the world of how close are we to midnight. And this year, in 2022, they voted. These are scientists. These are nuclear. These are uh, cyber, uh, uh, cyber war experts. These are not preachers and prophecy preachers. These are some of the brightest minds in the scientific world. And they said that things are so dangerous from pestilence to all kinds of things that they voted to move the hand to 60 seconds from midnight. 60 seconds from midnight. What should the position of the church be this close to midnight? How many of you do believe and recognize that Jesus is going to return to this earth? Just like he promised. Jesus taught and he said, there are two examples of prayer I want to give you. Number one, there's the Lord's prayer and he laid it out first. The Lord's prayer is grade school prayer. It's about personal needs. You go through, give us this day our daily bread. Give me enough to get by today. Give me bread enough for me. It's about me being full, me having what I need. First of all, it tells us that God delights in meeting our needs. I want you to get happy about that because God really does delight in meeting all your needs. He delights in you having home and clothes and car and jobs and blessing. He's not in any way against you having your needs met. He wants to meet your needs. A loving father doesn't want to give you a stone if you ask for bread. Doesn't want to give you a serpent if you ask for Simply ask and acknowledge him and believe in him and trust him. He doesn't want to give you a serpent if you're asking for meat. And he says, I delight in meeting your personal needs. And that's good that you pray like that. That's one example of prayer. But then he instantly shifted it in the same chapter. And he said, once you get your personal life straightened out. You have bread. You're in a relationship with me. You're eating of the bread of heaven. You're taking communion in faith. You're washed. You're cleansed. I want you to shift gears at the midnight hour because he starts talking about now when we move into the midnight hour, when we are getting the signs of the times are happening everywhere, there is a position. It's grown up time now. It's no, you can't be a casual Christian no more in the midnight hour. You can't have mama's religion and daddy and them really love the Lord. You can't do that. You can't play that game. You will be. I am talking to people. 
I am talking to people, even as I'm speaking, who will not be ready for the rapture. And the posture of the church is not one of just trying to hold on to Jesus. Once you get your daily bread, it's a piece of bread, one piece of bread, he shifts and he starts telling a parable and he said, he said, I want to give you this parable. It's centered around midnight, prophetic alert, prophecy alert. There was a man who went to the house at midnight and started beating on the door at midnight. When the world is reeling and rocking at midnight, the position and posture of the church is it has grown from immaturity of just bless me, just save me. I'm going to heaven. I don't really care about the world. I don't care about these lost people I'm working with. And yeah, I got family lost, but that's God's business. And I guess he'll save them. Good luck. But there has to be a spiritualness that comes in the church that shifts in the midnight hour that the church becomes that man pounding on the door. Give me bread for my friends. They're going to die. They're going to be lost. They're going to go into eternity or even worse. They're going to be left behind when Jesus comes. And I know God has my friends on a journey. Notice they're not brothers. This is not for the family. This is not for the kingdom. This is for the friends, the people out there that are not brothers and sisters in Christ. They are lost and I'm not mad at them. They're my friends. I'm not mad at the gay community. I'm not mad at people who disagree with what I preach. I'm not mad at people of other religions. They're my friends and God is going to allow their journey to be, if I can get, and notice he said, give me three loaves for my friends. We're, we just think we come to church just to keep our little... God said, I want you to get a burden for a lost world and ask me for three loaves. you got not just enough for you to get by, but you've got enough that you can share it and people see what you've got and they want it. And when they do, you say, yes, here, I was waiting on you. Friends looking for bread, friends looking for authenticity and realness and honesty and truth and integrity. They're going to come our way in the midnight hour. The only question is, will this house, will this ministry have bread? Are we, we, or will we be just another church having church services where people don't feel life and they don't feel because that's what that bread is. Jesus said, I am life. I'm the bread of life. I can fulfill. I can, that, that hole in your soul, that thing that is missing, that gnawing hunger that alcohol cannot take away, that drugs cannot take away, that illicit sex cannot take away. I am the one who can feel the hunger of man's soul and I need a church that is pounding on the door saying bread, bread. Can you see that man? I'm going to preach like I want to now. I can see him at midnight. Bam, bam, bam. I need some bread and the dogs start yapping. Burr, 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 burr. I, I could I could hear it all. I put my uh, our lights are going on. Old Granny's got a stocking on her head and her outfit. Saying, "What now? Where is going on?" All, all the dogs are barking. Babies start screaming, rah, crying, and bam, bam, bread, bread. Why? What's the urgency? It's the midnight hour, and if we don't have bread, my friends are gonna be lost. Oh, it's up to you, preacher. We pay you to do that. No, you do not. Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. You, you are to be so full of bread. How do you get full of it? Pray. It's in, what was the whole lesson? What was the whole parable about? Pray. Ask. Seek. Knock. You don't do it. Therefore, you don't have it. In the midnight hour when we have bread, we must stir ourselves from slumber. 
The ten virgins were pure. They were holy. They were clean. But that all ten of them in the parable Jesus told were asleep. And they all ten had to be awakened. I am your wake up call. You got to get a prayer life. I'm just a teenager and you know, I spend 14 hours on Facebook. You got to get a, or whatever it is, I don't know, they change it every week, but you got to get a prayer life. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No more excuses. This is your generation. What are you going to do when you see the world going to hell? What are you going to do when you see America in decline? Hey, it's on your watch. And there's got to be some people who first understand there's no politics or politician that can fix this nation. There's no intellectual answer. The answer is not in education. The answer is not in politics. The answer is not in medicine. The answer is not in technology. The answer is in getting on our knees. And if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray like they need me, I'll turn the nation around. Come on, somebody. I I feel this thing down in my soul. Revival is coming to Free Chapel and to the body of Christ, especially the churches that are knocking in intercessory prayer. Crying bread, Mr. Jones. Get up, Mr. Jones. He's a little extreme. I am. And I'm getting worse the older I get. Intercessory prayer is the secret weapon of the church. If somebody don't want to hear your witness, intercessory prayer will go get in their car. Intercessory prayer will go get in their apartment where they're shacked up. Intercessory prayer will go in a drug den. Intercessory prayer will go behind prison bars. Intercessory prayer will go in an ICU unit. Intercessory prayer will go beyond the division in your family and the wall of no communication. Intercessory prayer, an invisible force of heavenly angels will begin to surround that property if you will pray. Clap your hands and say it's prayer time in America. I've invited them. They won't come. Then stop inviting them and pray. And then they'll call you. I got to come. Watch. Watch. If you want bread, you better be beating on the door at the midnight hour. That's where God expects the church to be. Listen to verse 5. What did he ask for? Bam, bam, bam. I want three loaves. The audacity to make such a big ask. Jesus in the previous same chapter said, just pray for enough. Give me this day my daily bread. But here's this guy, because he's not praying for himself. He's thinking of others, the lost harvest. And he says, give me three loaves. It's three loaf time. It's time to ask big requests. When you're in the midnight hour and you see the signs of the times and you see prophecies and even in your soul, even if you're sitting there looking at me and you know you're not ready, you know you're not living right, you're not even trying, but you know just in your natural mind, you can see something is going on in this world. Something is just like those preachers preach. Something is about to happen. It's called the rapture. And when we get raptured out, then the restrainer, which is the Holy Spirit, will instantly be taken out and the Antichrist will 
instantly come on the scene. One world government, one world currency, one world religion. You want us to get out? When we go, the Holy Spirit goes, the restrainer. I'm so glad that I've got the Holy Ghost on Pentecost Sunday because he is the restrainer. Hell may want to destroy your family, but there's a restrainer. He's the mighty Holy Ghost of heaven, and he has the power to do what man cannot do. He's a protector. He's a comforter. He's a healer, and he's in us, and he's here right now. Welcome the Holy Spirit, somebody. Whew. One loaf meets my daily bread, but I am too in the midnight hour. Begin to earnestly pray. Give me three loaves. Let me be full of you, and then give me three extra loaves. No more patty cake for Jesus. It's midnight. The world is reeling and rocking like a drunkard. It's no time for business as usual. It's three loaf time. And I love the fact that when the hounds of hell are on the loose, when demonic forces are assaulting families and marriages and everything good and everything right, calling evil good and good evil, that the Bible says the church is supposed to be not becoming more and more like the world, thinking like the world, acting like the world, but we are to move into a position of intercessory prayer where prayer starts taking over the church. Everything we do is bathed and saturated and marinated in prayer, and we're pounding on the door. We know the friends are coming. We know the lost are on a journey. They're headed this way, and we're a ministry you can trust because we will pound the doors of heaven until you get Give us three loaves for our friends. Listen to what Jesus said. Everybody say, Jesus said. If a church starts doing that in the midnight hour, though he would not, the master of the house would not give bread to him because he was his friend, he gave it to him because of his persistence. He gave it because of his persistence, his importunity. He kept coming back and coming back and pounding harder and hitting harder. Then that's when Jesus taught that marvelous verse. Ask. We've, we've, we've turned the whole saying around. We used to say, we used to say, pray and you don't have to worry. But now we say worry. And, 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 and I'm not going to pray. It's sad. It's sad. It's like prayer shouldn't be the last thing on your list. Prayer should be the first thing that comes to your mind when crisis comes. And that's a, that's a good temperature taker of how spiritual you are. If you think the moment stuff comes and hits your life, if your first thought is, let me fix it, let me call so-and-so, let me call the doctor, let me call this one, that one, that nothing wrong with doing all that, but the first thing ought to be, if there's any God in you, oh, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. What's wrong with us? We, we got to be more spiritual than just showing up at church. We got to get some loaves of him to where he is what we have to offer more than anything else. And when a church, when a choir, when the ushers, when the workers, when the pastors, when the, when the singers, when the congregation, when they all move into a position of intercessory prayer, God starts loading down the bread. And he said, though he will not give it to a friend because this, this guy is knocking on that door. This is not a light rattle. He's not using that little brass thing. Say, ding, ding. This is, this, come on, church. That's about how our prayer life is. Click, God, God, did I hear something? I close with this. 
I'm sure somebody, when that man stood up, I'm sure there was enough lights on. I'm sure somebody screamed out the window, you better stop. We're going to call 911. <laughs> this man said, nope. It's the midnight hour, and I don't have what I need. That's the miracle. That's the miracle of the story. So many people don't even realize they don't have what they need in the midnight hour. They have grown cold. They have grown lukewarm. There's no prayer in the home. There's no prayer in the family. There's no prayer during the week. And this man, recognizing the desperation of friends coming, and I don't have what I need. I'm barely hanging on myself, and I'm supposed to be a witness to them. And he said, I don't have what I need for my family that's lost, for people in, that I work with. I don't have what I need. Jacob wrestled with an angel. The angel could have whipped him from the very beginning of the wrestling. He could have destroyed him. He, he, could have, he pulled his hip out of joint. He could have taken his head off. But the fight was fixed. And when, Jake, when the angel said to Jacob, let me go under his breath, he was saying, I hope you don't. Because if you will hold on, if you will say, I will not let you go until you bless me, your name is going to be changed from Jacob to Israel, which means a prince with God, and you're going to be given power with God and favor with men. You are going to win such a victory. A door is going to open for you, Jacob, that will change his... I stood on that ground this week in Israel which he was the, the named, his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. He had 12 sons. I stood in that city of Jerusalem. I stood and I all over that sea of Galilee. I stood and I preached from those places where I was and taped and, and all of that. And I'm standing there and I'm realizing it all came because a man would wrestle. I'm simply saying to you, Jacob, and I'm saying to every one of you, and if you don't hear anything else this preacher says, you might ought to write this down. You're going to be crippled before you will be crowned. Joseph, there's going to be a pit before there is a palace. And the only question is, will you hold on through the crippling long enough to get to the crowning? Will you hold on through the pit long enough to get to the palace? Because if you keep pounding and knocking and wrestling, even though you go through a season when you've been crippled, you will be crowned. You will, he will bring beauty out of ashes. He will turn the battle. He he will do what he promised in his word. Take a praise break at every campus and praise the Lord, even for the crippling, even for the pits, because on the other side is a crown. On the other side is a palace, a high place. Whew. Asking for bread. I've got some friends on a journey. And I know they're going to come by me. The Apostle Paul said, I count myself accursed that I might reach the Gentiles. He had such a burden for those people who were lost that he said, I'll take the curse. One, one, one theologian said, Paul said, I'll be willing to go to hell if Israel can go to heaven. Moses had the same spirit. He said, blot my name out. God said, I'm going to destroy him and I'm going to start all over just like I did with Noah. But I, you're good. You're good. You've got bread. You're mine. I, we're friends. I've talked to you face to face, Moses. And Moses said, you blot my name out if you blot their name out. That's, that's that three loaf friends are coming. What do you mean? Three loaves, not just enough for me and my family, but for my state, for my nation, and for my world. Three loaves. Somebody's coming. You shall be witnesses. You shall be what I will use. And on the day of Pentecost, the apostle Peter got so full of the Holy Spirit that he presented to the world at the birth of the church three loaves in Acts 2. In verse 38, here's the first loaf of bread. Repent, every one of you. 
And number, loaf number two, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Loaf number three, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is not un, this promise is, for this promise is to you and to your children and to those that are far off. They're just out there. But if you'll get in this position, you can repent. You can be baptized and the past washed away. And then I will fill you with so much bread that it will be passed down for generations. And I'm hungry for all three loaves this morning. I'm done. Play. I want you to get so full of this bread that when they come to your churches and they're atheists and they've had uh, been raised in other religions or, or no religion, that when they come asking, all right, if you got it, let me have some. It took you years to get me here. I'm here. Now I want to feel something real. I want to experience something powerful. And Jesus gives this illustration. He says, if a natural father, when they ask for bread, would give, not give a stone. If a natural father, when they ask for meat, would not give a serpent or a scorpion. How much more will the Holy Spirit give to them that ask? But the question is, what are they going to get when they come to Free Chapel? And it's not just up to a pastor. I'm telling every one of you, you better get a prayer life. You better get a prayer. And that's why, that's why we're doing what we're doing. I felt such a burden at the beginning of this year that God said, this church is not praying. This church is not praying, but we are now. And we're going to do it more and more. And tonight at five o'clock, we will have one hour of intercessory prayer. And bam, bam, bam. Why? Because it's a midnight hour. And we know we need three loaves. We're not going to ask for little things. I don't want people to come to this church and say, I don't, uh, there's nothing here. I'm going to another bakery. I'm going to go try seances. I'm going to go try tarot cards. I'm going to go call a witch and ask them to read my future. I'm going to go try Islam. I'm going to go try New Age movement. I'm going to go try some Far East religion. If we don't get fresh bread in the house, there's only one way. <laughs> And so you say, well, you know, I know that's what you preachers need to do. Uh -uh. We're talking about your family. But boy, I feel it. I feel it. I feel this thing. As I was leaving my hotel room, I, you say, you, you spiritualize everything. I do. I believe in God. I know how God speaks to me. I was walking down the hall of the hotel, had two bags and my briefcase and I'm pushing those little things and the last door that I see before I turn right in the elevators right there in Jerusalem we were there during the feast of Pentecost it just ended yesterday that and and we were there during the feast of Pentecost we I, we didn't it was a quick trip I had to go dedicate that stuff and we just it just hit and we just had to go but as I'm leaving the last door, it wasn't on the other doors, but the last door, and I, I meant to download the picture from my phone because it so impressed me. To, I took a picture. I took a picture of the hotel door, and because it was the Feast of Pentecost, and all the Jews were down, the Jewish people, the religious Jews were down in the lobby by the hundreds. They were with their little families, and they had their little, uh, it's just the sweetest thing, and they, they were celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, and it was just, I'm just, I'm just in awe, and, I, I'm, and, to, and to, the, to the Jewish mind, the Feast of Pentecost is, is the celebration of harvest, and so you know what was on this, on this hotel door? A picture, uh, 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 not a picture. I took the picture. I'll show it to you next week. I forgot to give it to them. But somebody had taken a stalk of harvest, uh, of wheat, a, a stalk of wheat, and had taped it on their door. And so as I'm leaving Jerusalem, and I got my bags, and I'm walking through there, I look, and the last thing I see is a reminder of, the harvest is out there. It's coming. Friends are coming. They're coming. 
They're coming. You're in the midnight hour. They're coming. The only question is, will this ministry pound on the door of heaven until we get three loaves? Stand to your feet, please. I'm giving a different altar call this morning. I realize if you need to leave, you need to leave, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are here today and you would say, I recognize my need for more of bread. I know our family. I know me personally. I know I've got friends. I've got relatives. I've got lost loved ones. I've got people searching. I've got dr people on drugs. I've got people who are alcoholics that are in my family. And even if they came to me now, I don't, I'm barely hanging on myself. I need, here's what I'm calling you to. I'm calling everyone today who will hear the call to prayer, to say, God, I need three loaves. Feel me first this morning and then give me the three loaves. If you're more concerned about time or you've got appointments, I get that. And sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Some people have to go to work. I get that. This is different. I'm going into overtime. I'm warning you. But if you would say, Pastor, I feel the call to prayer. I need a prayer line. And I'm asking everyone who will give yourself. Jesus turned to his own disciples after all those miracles, after all those blessings. And he said, could you not tarry with me for one hour in the midnight hour? I'm about, this is midnight. I'm about to be a, could you not tarry one hour? hour? Well, you putting it on us, Pastor. I sure am. Because I'm going to give an account for this flock. We're not playing games. We got to pray. We need, it's three loaf time. Because they're coming. Turn to somebody and say, the lost are coming. Your sons and your daughters are coming. Your grandchildren are coming. The question is, will you be pounding your friends? You know your friends? You know your friends that are, you know your friends that are struggling? Well, come on, come on from the top balcony, wherever you are at every campus, feel the front. Throw your hands up. You don't have to kneel. You can if you want to, but throw your hands up and let's everybody that, well, we can't all get down there. The hungry will, the ones who want three loaves will, the three loaf will, and it ought to, even, even as a family, come, what could be more important? It's the midnight hour. It, we must awake from slumber. We must, we must. The only thing that can do it is prayer. It's prayer. And I don't want the praise and worship team to pray for you and fill the room with noise. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to begin to pray all over this building. Pray for your sons. Pray for your daughters. Pray for your grand. Close your eyes. Forget about people around you. Lift your hands and begin to knock. You have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be open. Seek and you shall find. Come on. Come on. Pray. All over this room, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Lord, we love you. We seek you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, fill us with the Holy Ghost. Give us all three, all three loaves baptized on, in the Holy Spirit. Give prayer languages. Let sons and daughters speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Fill this house with bread. Fill this house with miracles. They're coming. They may have to see a miracle to believe. So let this house be full of miracles. They may have to see some other sign or wonder. Fill this house with bread. We want three loaves. We're not asking for little things. We're not asking for a little bit of power and a little bit of Sunday morning church. We want all three loaves. We want the power of the Holy Spirit. We want the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I need some intercessors to pray. We want more than those tinkling cymbals and sounding brass. We want not by might nor by power. We want by thy my spirit, saith the Lord. Oh, God, we cry out. Oh, God, we recognize we don't have enough bread.
bread. We recognize we're in the midnight hour. We see the signs of the times. And there are going to be two different worlds going on. The church that's just playing church. And there's going to be a church, a remnant, that are going to be praying, fasting, crying out, and saying, I've got bread to a lost and dying world. I want to be that church. Feel me. You know, he put it in the, when he multiplied the bread, he put it in the disciples' hands first. And then as they started, got so full of what they had, they started giving it away. And then it multiplied. Then it multiplied. You need to get full of him right now. Say, come on, bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. Give us three loaves for our state, for our nation, and for our world. Use the influence of this church. We ask you for bigger things. We ask you for greater things. We ask you for exceedingly, abundantly, above all. We could ask a thing. We ask you for miracles. We ask you for miracles. We ask you for miracles. We ask you for our friends that are lost. Our friends that are suicidal. Our friends that are strung out on drugs somewhere today. Oh, give us bread. Send them our way. And give us so much bread that they don't have to go to another breakery. They don't look anywhere else but the cross. This is my body, this bread that is broken for you. Pray, pray, pound the door of heaven. Pray, pray. And there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. Behold, he said in Revelation, the end time midnight hour church. I stand at the door and I knock, but they're so religious they won't let me in. They're so into entertainment and other things they won't let me in. Let him in this morning. Let him into your house through prayer. Let him into your family through prayer. Let him into your marriage through prayer. Let him into your future, your business through prayer. He'll give you three loaves. He'll turn that business into a place that blesses the kingdom work. You and you may be amazed at how much God prospers you if you'll be willing to ask, give me three loaves and I'll build orphanages. I'll do something that God lays on your heart for the poor and the needy and the lost. Just looking for people who will pray. Come on now, turn the intensity notch up about three notches. Reach over and lay your hand on somebody beside you. Do it quick. Lay your hand on them and then turn the prayer up. Don't let anybody's voice stop your voice. Begin to pray now. Pray earnestly. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, a righteous woman avails much. Oh, I indeed baptize you with water, but he that is coming after me, he shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Fire, fire. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. You'll have three loaves. You'll be full, so overflowing that a bunch of friends will come to you. And you'll share the bread of life. And they'll be changed. Save our families, oh God. Send revival to every camp 
us, oh God. Heal our land, oh God. Have mercy. Pour out your spirit on our sons and our daughters, oh God. Fill our children and our grandchildren with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Pray. If you don't want what you grew up in to be lost, you better do it. If you don't want the church to lose the power and dependency on the anointing of the Holy Ghost in prayer, you better do it. If you don't want the church to be dry and dead and religious and formal, you better be a praiser. You better pound the heaven gates with intercessory prayer. Pray. 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 Thank you, Lord. I woke up this morning and this song was on my heart. It's the strangest thing. I called them. I called them. I told Tracy, Pastor Tracy, I said, tell Bill to, and the team to get this song ready. We have not sung it literally in years. I grew up as a child hearing this song sung. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. Lift your hands toward heaven, please. Have thy own way. Sing it and play it lightly. best for my life. I submit not my will, thine be done. Hallelujah. Oh, just mold me and live. time, one more time, sing it, play it everybody, have thy own way, Lord. have thy own way, thou art the J. 
just a moment and maybe after I will if you're standing by a family member or your husband or wife, would you take them by the hand and Bill, just play it for a moment. Team. Yeah, just keep the light beat. Just keep it going. Church, you know to pray. You know to pray. Pray. Don't wait on a preacher to tell you to pray. What are we doing? We're in his presence. Yield yourself to it. Yield yourself to it. Yield yourself to prayer right now. He's going to play it again. Hold that hand of that loved one. And yield your family to God right now. Just the piano one more time. Every situation you're facing as a family, he's going to play it one more time. Touch and agree. If any two of you shall agree as touching a thing, it shall be done according to my Father in heaven in my name when you touch and agree. Do it right now. Do it right now. Matthew 18. If any two of you touch and agree in my name. Grip that hand. <laughs> Grip that hand. <laughs> Glory to God. The devil is a liar. Satan is a liar. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much, Holy Spirit.
Let's lift up our hands all over this room. Just one moment now. Just lift up your hands all over this room. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We honor you today. It's such a privilege to pray. You have torn the veil. We can enter in by your blood to the Holy of Holies. We don't have to worry. We don't have to fear. We don't have to dread and live in dread and anxiety. Whew. Anxiety, panic, sleeplessness, tossing and turning in, in, in anxiety, dread. Oh, but today we hear your call to prayer. Three loaves, we ask. Take it all. Take it in a moment. Take it away. Replace it with confidence. Replace it with your presence. Replace it with your promises. We receive it today. We receive it today. Thank you today. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Just raise your hand up. Just raise your hand up one last time. Pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, wash me. Cleanse me, save me, fill me. Thank you for the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our worship. Thank you for our team. Oh God, we love you and we praise you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Let me explain something to you every once in a while. It's not that these, these are some of the greatest musicians on planet Earth. It's not that they're doing anything wrong. It's, it's very hard. It's very hard to explain that, that when the Spirit of the Lord is moving, you have to be extremely sensitive. It's nothing mystical. It's just something you learn. And these are the greatest. These musicians are on another level. But, but following, like, I, I don't know how to say it. But anyhow, you understand what I'm saying? And it's a wonderful thing. I love having young people. You can train them how to flow just a little bit. Just flow. Just, sometimes you slow the pace down. Sometimes you, you just flow. The old timers taught us that. I used to play the drums for my church. <laughs> and those old timers... The, they didn't keep good time sometimes, but you, if the tambourines change, you change. You, they don't change with you. You change. It's just how it is. Y'all don't know, know what I'm talking about. But it's a wonderful thing. Receive this blessing. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I need to tell you that my brand new book comes out Tuesday, but we've got it in the back today and you can get your copy. And listen, you say, well, I'm going to get one later. I'm not going to worry about it. But this week is a very important week and there's power in numbers. And if you're going to get it, my preference would be you get it this week, order it, go in your favorite Christian bookstore or places like Walmart, wherever, pick it up or order it online through Amazon or any other way you're going to get it and help us drive it up. I believe it could go to number one in Christian inspiration if, if we all do it together. Thank you for your support. There's important messages about the coming of the Lord. I'll begin that series next Sunday right here for three weeks. We'll teach. 
some of the powerful things in that book, but you ought to get it and get a head start because what I'll be sharing will be coming from a different angle from what you will be reading, but you will recognize where we're going and it will be powerful. Pick your copy up as soon as you can. We love you all. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Thank you. Be blessed. Free Chapel, what an amazing Sunday morning it was here and how sweet it is to be in the presence of the Lord. We love you guys so much and we are so glad that you could join us this morning. If you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out. We have a team waiting to be with you. Yes, today, if you made the choice to be saved, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, first we wanna say congratulations. Yes. We are so happy for you, but also we wanna partner with you and walk alongside you in your faith journey. So please text the word yes to 510-510 so that our team can get connected with you. Or if you're out there and you need prayer for anything, big, small, or somewhere in between, please text the word prayer to 510-510 and our team will be praying right alongside you. Yes, and we wanna thank you all for giving so, so generously to this ministry. It's been such a blessing um, as Pastor Jensen was in Israel and we can see the fruits of you guys' uh, blessings. So yes. thank you so much for giving. And um, also, if you want to be connected into a small group, please don't forget to get signed up for that at freechapel.org slash groups. It's a really amazing experience as well as watch parties. So yes. we hope to see you all in a watch party this upcoming Sunday. It's gonna be a great time. Yes, it will. But let me pray for you guys before we continue on with our Sunday, but Lord, I thank you so much for our online campus. God, they are special and we are so glad, God, that you have chosen to plant them here at this church. God, I pray this message has encouraged them, Lord. I pray that they would not just let this message be in one ear, not the other, God, but that they would take this message and apply it throughout their week, God, that they would knock boldly on your door, God, and ask you for that three loaf blessing, God. No more just being concerned about ourselves, but let's be the hands and feet of Christ and walk out this faith journey with you, Jesus. And I pray, Father, just blessing on our online campus throughout their week. We love them and we thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice and all that you are. And we seal this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We love you guys. We'll see you next Sunday.